Connor. Uh, today I want to go over how we plant potatoes here on the Caspis farm. Um, give you all a little demonstration about how that works. So um, out here, this is the field where we're planting our potatoes in our ocean view field. Technically the bay, but we call it the ocean view. Um, and you see that our beds are all prepped and ready for planting. So the process that we went through after we had our nice tall cover crop, mowed that cover crop down with our flail mower, did one disc pass when the moisture was just right, uh, and then went ahead with our spader, did a spading pass, and then listed up our beds with a Lilson cultivator. So made these mounds. And now we're ready to plant. The, um, the tilt here is, you can see it's, um, you know, pretty good and we still have some kind of larger clods and, and some aggregates in here. Um, the moisture, not a ton of moisture at the top and still a little bit of moisture down below and that's going to be just fine for our planting. All right, so here is our potato planter and I'll talk about that in one second. Um, what I want to talk about first before we actually uh, see how we put the potatoes in the ground is just talk about a really important process that actually started about three weeks ago before planting. So when we get, when you plant potatoes, you know you plant the potato itself, right? So um, these potatoes are uh, the same ones that you would eat, but these ones have been grown specifically for seed, stored at the right conditions, and then shipped out to us. We actually get ours from Colorado. Um, when we receive our seed pieces, uh, what we do is right away, we don't actually put them in the cooler. Um, what we do is we leave them out in our packing shed in what we consider or what is largely called bright shade. So you don't want them in super dark shade. Think about that potato that you left in your closet. You want it to be kind of bright, but not too bright. And the reason is that um, what you're trying to do is find that balance. If you leave a seed potato in a cupboard in total shade, what you're going to get is that potato that you bought four weeks ago and forgot to cook. And we've all seen this in our houses where that sprout gets white and long and spindly. Um, and you don't want that. That's a sprout that's going to break off easily when we're planting, um, especially when we drop it into this soil. Uh, on the other side of things, if we were to just put these right out into the sun and they were exposed to all of the solar radiation and had all that heat, the potato is still a living thing. It's a living, it's actually like a living stem. Um, and what would happen is it would just desiccate and it would lose so much moisture and, and kind of, um, and wilt up. And so we don't want it to, to be exposed to so much sun. So we want to find that happy medium where it has a little bit of light, but not too much. Um, again, this idea of bright shade is what we're looking for. And if you have your potatoes out in those conditions, um, what you end up with are sprouts just like these. And this is what we're looking for. So what you see here is just the beginnings of little sprouts on the potatoes, but they're not long and spindly, but they're nice and thick. So again, here's another great example of a sprout that you can see even the leaves are starting to show on this, this new stem that's being formed. Um, but this is a nice thick sprout and this is the ideal time to plant our potatoes. What this means is that the potato has essentially broken from dormancy, it's ready to start growing, and now is the time when we're going to put it in the ground and let it grow. Um, once we put it in the ground, this seed piece where these stems are shooting up that's where our roots will come out. The roots will come right at that union right there, um, and the plant will grow up from there. So now I want to talk about the potato planter itself. And as I mentioned, one of my favorite tools on the farm because it's really so simple. Um, all that we have here is a single toolbar, uh, a clamp with a shovel, uh, and two, um, these are actually little um, picks to actually drop drip tape in the soil, but we just have them here to basically hold the potato crate for planting. So the way that it works is that as you're driving, somebody sits on the back of this toolbar and you can just drag your feet in the soil, grab a potato and drop it through the pipe, have it come out the bottom and as the trench opens and, and covers itself up a little bit. 
the particulars of this planter are that this shovel that we use is an Alabama shovel, what some folks call an Alabama shovel. And the, what makes it that specific type of shovel is that it has a point, like all shovels do, but most shovels will have a high back to kick soil really wide and far out. If you're gonna list up beds like this with shovels, you would have two high back shovels. These Alabama shovels have a nice flat top and what that does is it makes a nice trench but allows a lot of that soil to just flow over the back um, and so there's nice kind of loosely aggregated soil where the potatoes will drop into. Attached to that shovel is just a piece of three inch PVC pipe that we have, you know, most of the time we have it attached just with hose clamps, um, sometimes some stronger tape um, if the hose clamp isn't holding. Um, and we just have attached this to the clamp so it stays nice and steady. Um, and that's really it. We drive slowly and we make sure that we set our depth right so the potatoes get buried um, not too deep and not too shallow. And it works like a charm. So, here, here's a bed that we have planted in our potatoes and I just wanna show you what it looks like after the process. Um, so you can see that some of our potatoes are kind of poking their heads out. Um, some are buried a little bit more uh, in the soil um, and that's all okay for us. Um, you'll see that our spacing is rather tight. Um, we like to put our potatoes anywhere from six to 12 inches is what we shoot for, probably closer to that eight inch range. Um, again, when we're planting off the back of the tractor, with different people planting. We never get the planting that precise, but by the time these grow up, we'll have a nice full row. So it's totally fine for us. The closer that you plant the potatoes, um, the smaller your potatoes will be. And oftentimes we find that when our plants have too much space, we get these big lunker potatoes that nobody really wants at the market. Um, so planting them a little bit closer is really ideal for us. The other thing that we wanna make sure we're doing, uh, as I mentioned previously, is that we're planting these potatoes at the right depth. So for us on the field scale, it's really important that we keep our potatoes at just about the same depth as the actual furrow that the tractor is gonna drive in. The reason for that is that we use a mechanical potato harvester and it can't dig that deep in the soil. Um, so we don't want any potatoes to go below um, the furrow level. With potatoes like these, um, what sometimes folks don't quite realize is that this is a stem that's going to start to be a potato. Roots will grow from this point, but because potatoes are actually just swollen stems, this potato seed piece won't set any potatoes below where you plant it. It will only set them above. So by establishing our depth of seed piece at the furrow level, we know that we'll only get potatoes in this zone here. So the next process after we do this, um, after we set all these potatoes in the ground, is that um, we will do a light hilling on top of these potatoes. And what that looks like is, again, I'll use the Lilliston cultivator, and instead of making nice tall mounds, we'll drive a little bit more slowly and make just a little bit, a little covering, just a couple inches on top of those potatoes. The reason for that right now is, um, is now we do, now that the potatoes are in the ground, as they start to grow, we actually do want them to grow in darkness because as they grow in darkness, the stem will stay blanched and that's a physical indicator or an environmental indicator that it should start its stolen production, it should start its potato production. So right now, this is what we think of as almost our first hilling of the potatoes where we're gonna make these sprouts push up through three or four inches of soil and get that initiation of, of potatoes right away. Um, the other reason is that this, can, this is a way for us to help control weeds. Um, after that, once the potatoes have sprouted out of this, you know, maybe three or four inches, we'll come back with an actual hilling where we'll pull that soil a little bit higher on the stem. And then again, um, you know, once they get, again, three or four inches taller, we'll do it one more time so that these beds will eventually look just like those listed beds that they were before we trenched them out to plant. They'll be about that high. And that's how much soil we're piling around the stems to really get a good, a good tuber set from those potatoes. So the last thing I wanna talk about is 
um, the moisture of these beds. So right now the surface of the soil is pretty dry. You can see the sun has really drawn out most of the moisture. Um, but down below here, if I dig just a little bit, and you can see here's a seed piece here, a small seed piece. But as I dig down in that soil, I still have a little bit of moisture. And there's two different ways that sometimes we um, plant our potatoes. Um, the ideal way, which we don't have today, but it's gonna be okay. The ideal way for us is to actually pre-irrigate this whole field. So put down about an inch and a quarter's worth of water, maybe a week or 10 days before we plant. And what that does is it will make, give us more of this moisture um, in these beds and throughout what we call the soil profile. If we have enough moisture at that point ahead of planting, then when we come through and dig these trenches and push these potatoes into the ground, they're gonna be surrounded by really moist soil. And these potatoes, because they have all this carbohydrate storage in the seed piece, they'll start to grow, they'll express their roots, the roots will find that water and those plants will grow. What won't grow um, in, that, in that soil is weeds because we haven't watered it on top. So that's the ideal way to do it because again, as organic growers, one of our biggest concerns is always weed control. And this is a, a, a way for us to get a real jump start on the weeds and potatoes. In a situation where maybe we didn't have time to pre-irrigate or something happened, um, which is the situation we're in this year, um, the soil, there's some moisture, but not enough for us to really get these potatoes to grow. So what we're gonna do is we will, um, I'll do my, that small hilling on top of the potatoes, we'll lay out a li our lines of drip tape, and we'll go ahead and give them just one irrigation for probably about one or two hours, the equivalent of about a half an inch of water. That water is all those potatoes will need to get going, and we won't water them again until we see the sprouts poke up above the surface. If we water them every day, we would run the risk of potentially rotting these seed pieces by keeping the soil too moist. And additionally, we, all that water we're putting down is gonna germinate more and more weeds on the soil surface. If we just do one irrigation, we'll get some weeds, but probably not too many. And there's other ways that we can manage those weeds once, once they're established. Okay, so now we've planted our potatoes. They're in the trench. Now we're gonna do our first pass to just cover those potatoes with again, about three or four inches of loose soil, kind of like a first hilling, although we don't call it that. The way we're gonna do it is we use this implement, the Lilliston Cultivator, one of my favorite implements on the farm, um, mainly because it's just so simple. So the Lilliston Cultivator has um, these tines, which are called spider gangs. Um, and as the tractor pulls these spider gangs through the soil, they rotate. And then the action of this rotation is what mounds the soil up on top of the potatoes. So if we're gonna list beds up to those nice full peaks, we're gonna drive pretty fast and I'm gonna put this implement in the ground quite a bit. Um, in this scenario where we're just covering the potatoes with again about three or four inches of soil, I'm actually gonna have the implement tilted almost all the way forward. I'm not gonna lower it all the way and I'm gonna drive fairly slowly so that by the end, we should see just a small little divot into the center um, that has our potatoes covered. Okay, so we're here at our potatoes. Um, these, were these ones in particular were planted a week ago and, um, but we just got water on them yesterday. Um, so you'll see that our drip tape is out. Um, and as a reminder, we had planted them in the trench and covered them with just a little bit of soil. Um, and now as we dig down, you can see that the soil is nice and moist. If I take a small trowel full, oh, I got my potato. We'll look at that in a second. As I dig down, Soil is very, very moist. See, it's slightly staining my hands. I can form it into a ribbon if I want. So we've got pretty good moisture in the field. Um, and that came from just two hours of irrigation with this, what in our system is about a half an inch of water. Um, and that moisture will be down, you know, a good six inches at least. Um, and as a reminder, we will not water these again until we really see these sprouts come up. 
The danger at this point is that if we water too much, we'll actually rot the seed pieces themselves um, and then end up losing our plants. So we want to just give them enough water to get going um, and let them take it from there. Um, this potato that I happened to dig up is a perfect, um, is exactly what we'd want to see at this time. So again, this potato has now been in the ground for a week. It only saw that water yesterday, and you can see how much root activity it's already starting to put on. Um, I'll try to gently brush this away so you can see it a little bit better. But you can see here is the stem that's sprouting, and here are the roots forming from that, the eye of that potato. Um, and these roots definitely started growing before yesterday, before we added water. They started growing pretty much as soon as we put that potato in the ground. They sensed that there was some moisture in the soil, even if we felt like it wasn't enough to get the potatoes going all the way. It was definitely enough for it to start putting out those roots and search searching for water. And now we're starting to see stem elongation. Um, and so this potato, you know, again, it was just, just barely buried in the soil. I would bet that we would see that sprout pop in maybe five to seven days from now. Um, so we'll keep an eye on this row. We'll look for sprouts starting to come up um, so that we can do our first hilling. Hey everybody, um, we're here in the potatoes. So um, you can see our potatoes are starting to come up now. Just as a quick refresher, um, these potatoes were planted about nine days ago. Um, because we didn't have enough uh, moisture in the beds, we ran this line of drip tape and then we put down just a quarter inch of water, so just a little bit of water, an hour on our drip tape um, to give them enough to kind of get a jump. Um, but we didn't want to water too much because again, we wanted to prevent too many weeds coming up with the potatoes. So by giving it that one kind of deep irrigation and then letting the potatoes and all that carbohydrate storage that they have in that seed piece be the fuel for it, um, you see the potatoes are growing up really nicely. Um, and on, in terms of the weed germination on the surface, um, I can find just this one little weed right here. Um, but the rest of the bed is looking pretty clean. That said, I know that there are weeds that are germinating under the surface right now. Um, and because we're gonna come in and do a hilling pretty soon, um, this is the ideal time to run our tine weeder. Um, so the tine weeder is a tool that will just gently rake the surface and hopefully get these weeds that are just, if I can pull this one up. That are just at what we call the thread stage. So again, it looks like a fine piece of thread because it doesn't have a very developed root system. This is the ideal time to cultivate these weeds because if that tine weeder just nicks a plant like this, um, we have a much better chance of killing it than once it has a real branched root system and is much more developed. So again, we'll run the time weeder through this really quickly. Um, and then, you know, this is, we're at day nine um, with this crop. And I think that probably by the end of the week, by the time we get to say 14 days, um, we're gonna be ready to hill this, to do our first hilling. So in some ways we could skip the tine weeding pass. It's not totally necessary, um, but because it's so fast, we like to do it just to get a little bit of extra weed control. Um, and again, it's really just raking the surface of the soil like that. Um, it's not doing a whole lot of disturbance, um, but the hilling will take care of a lot of weeds. It's just if some get a little bit too established, sometimes they can survive that hilling. Um, and so this tine weeding will make sure we take care of just all the extras. Uh, so here we are, this is our tine weeder. Um, there's a number of different manufacturers that make implements like this. Um, the basic concept is that there are a whole bank of tines that are all offset behind the tractor. Um, and they have some tension on them. This, is, this um, uh, creates a tension with the spring and um, with this drum here that I'll talk about in a second. Um, but there's some tension on the tines that allows them to dig into the ground. And there's also enough play in these tines that it can bounce back and forth. And what that allows it to do is wiggle in the soil, just like you would rake your hands through the soil. It'll wiggle in the soil and it allows it to bounce around your crops, which ideally are more established, um, but rake out all the weeds in a somewhat wide section. I tend to really like this tine weeder. This is called a treffler tine weeder, um, mainly because of the ability to adjust the tension really quickly and easily. Um, 
the way that this works is that um, this is all tensioned on this drum. As a, if I release it, it spins open, and it's really easy to gauge if I want to set a very light tension at tension stop one, or if I want to go up to what we're doing here on the corn, which is all the way up to basically seven and a half. And as I roll in those cables, I'm gonna get more and more tension on those tines. It's gonna allow it to be more aggressive in how it digs through the soil. So um, when we wanna run this on our transplanted blocks in the first three to five days, it's really easy for us to dial this back to say, um, tension four and a half or something. And then when we have a crop like corn that can really take an aggressive tine weeding, again, it's so easy for me to adjust here to go up to seven and a half. Some other tine weeders, you can't adjust tension, but you actually have to adjust the tension on each individual tine. And you can imagine that can get really time consuming as you bounce back and forth between fields at different stages. Um, the last part of these tine weeders is that um, they have a, a depth setting. So these are gauge wheels. Um, and then if you run this, it's somewhat counterintuitive, but if you run the gauge wheels further down, so have the implement lifted up higher, um, it'll create your, time, your tines will have kind of a more aggressive angle. So when we don't want to run it that aggressively, we actually run it almost flatter to the ground so that the angle of the tines is more perpendicular to the bed um, uh, rather than kind of pointing in at an angle. Okay, so we've run the tine weeder through these potatoes. Um, and you can see the after effects, right? You can see definitely the time we was raking this way. So some of the plants are kind of flopped over a little bit. Um, we lost maybe a little growth tip or the edge of a, edge of a leaf. Um, and that's just not a big deal, right? The potatoes are strong. Um, they, I, I don't, I would doubt that we killed even one potato plant um, out here. And um, the soil, is nice and loosely raked all around the plant. So sometimes what we'll see um, is we'll actually be able to see those thread stage weeds that pop up to the surface after this tine weeding. Um, in this case, I can't actually find any. Um, in a whole chunk of the field, I couldn't find any. Um, so even if um, we don't see them, I'm sure we killed some of those weeds. Um, also, by creating that loose, um, dry soil on the surface, we're also gonna prevent any future weeds from germinating um, in these areas that they might have thought about doing it. Um, so the next step in this process, um, again, we've done a weeding out. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll run our drip lines again um, to give these potatoes a little bit of water. Um, and we'll do that intentionally ahead of our first hilling. So again, this next hilling will take place probably in about five days. Um, so we'll give them a good soak of water today um, or after this. Um, uh, the plants in five days will probably grow, you know, another at least two inches. Um, and then it'll be a perfect time for hilling. Okay, folks, so here we are now at day 14, so two weeks after planting and irrigating up these potatoes. Um, you can see we've gotten some really good growth um, and the field itself is pretty darn clean and that's what we wanna see. Um, right now, um, while it looks like there's no weeds in the field, we wanna make sure it stays that way. So even though it looks like there's no weeds, um, we're just starting to see a couple that are germinating um, as a result of a, those two irrigations that we did. Um, these are weeds that probably germinated after our tine weeding, um, but if we don't get, take care of them now, they will catch up with our, with our crops later. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move to our hilling. Um, so again, two weeks after planting, moving to hilling. Um, what the hilling will do is that we'll mound this loose soil up around the sides of these plants. When those stems get covered from sunlight, um, that will um, tell it to begin uh, initiating stolen formation. So it's gonna push out the potatoes that will be our harvested crop this year. Um, and the more of that stem that we can bury, the more sites we'll get of that stolen formation and the bigger our yield will be. Um, so looking at these two different rows, um, you can see they're at two slightly different heights. Um, and probably this smaller height is really, this would probably be our ideal height for hilling. Um, 
because we want to capture those stems and bury them as soon as we can. That said, um, this isn't bad, right? We're not too far off. Um, if I was shooting for perfect, you know, maybe two or three days ago would have been perfect to hill, but this will be just fine. And what you'll notice is that we'll pull quite a bit of soil around these, and ideally we want just, just the tip tops of the plants showing. Um, those are gonna continue to grow up and grow big and strong, um, and we'll really remake these mounds fairly tall. In that process, um, this drip tape that's here in the middle of the beds will get a little bit buried and snugged into the center, um, and that's fine for us. Again, it, with our potato harvester, our mechanical potato harvester, that drip tape will come out in the harvesting process. All right, so we've done our hilling pass, um, and some of these potatoes actually, I did two passes, and that, um, I just have to do that sometimes because we're moving quite a bit of soil around the plants. If you try to do it all at once, it, you just, you'd just you have to drive way too fast. So um, I did one pass and moved a little bit of soil. The second pass moved it way up, and you can see. Um, are pretty nicely covered, and um, we'll go ahead and dig one up. So right, so this is going to be our area of potato or spud development here. <coughs> With this first hilling that was kind of two hillings put together, this is where I clipped that um, uh, that potato plant off. So we're adding again another four inches so or so of burying, um, so that again we'll kind of double our area uh, that these um, potatoes will actually produce um, produce more spuds for us for harvest. Thing that I want to point out um, is that you know all of this hilling that we're doing all of this mounding of you know relatively nice loose soil around the plants is going to be the perfect environment for these little new potatoes to form and grow and express themselves um, and be covered by soil And so this nice loose soil that we're mounting is gonna prevent that greening. It's gonna create a really nice loose environment for those potatoes to grow. You're gonna be digging through this loosely aggregated soil that we've just gently mounted on top of the plant. Hey everybody, we are out in the potatoes here um, and just wanted to take a look at the, how things are growing. Um, we're at about day 50 now. Um, and so just as a reminder, um, the last operation that we did on these potatoes was hilling. Um, and we did, you know, kind of a combination of one and two hilling passes all in one. Um, we did uh, actually, we, we did one hilling on them, but we did two passes in that first hilling. So it's kind of like we threw soil twice, we just did it all in the same day. Um, and as you can see, the plants have responded really well. They're growing strongly. You look out in the field, again, we have really good weed control um, from this practice. Um, so right, all we did was we tine weeded them once and we hilled them twice in the same day. Um, and that was all that we did for weed control on this field. Um, and you see just how effective that hilling is um, in terms of protecting the plant. So if you look a little closer at what's happening in the understory here, you can see that we are, we do have some weed germination, right? But again, that's really in the understory. And if you look at those weeds, you can tell, maybe you can tell, maybe you can't, but 
These are pretty leggy weeds. They're trying to grow tall, they're thin, and it's because they have so much shade competition for light, and that's what we want to see, right? These weeds are really going to be outcompeted by this plant that's so much larger um, than it. So again, I'm not terribly worried about, about these weeds. Um, that's something that I can live with as an organic grower. Um, you'll see the, the drip tape again in that hilling was kind of moved to the top of the hill. So, you know, the, the tape is not even fully buried, um, which in some ways is ideal because when we come through with our mechanical potato harvester, it'll just help that drip tape sit on the surface and, and not get caught in the machine. Um, and yeah, and the plants are growing really well. Um, you can see the potatoes are, some of these varieties are in flower. Um, and potatoes have, they have beautiful flowers. Um, these actually will set fruit that look like tomatoes, and we'll probably see that a little bit later. Um, and the only reason you would deal with those fruits is if you're trying to genetically breed a new, t a new potato. Um, you would save seed from that fruit because that's where the crossing happens. Um, for us and for most potato seed growers, um, if you want just the same variety, you're just harvesting the spuds. Again, you're harvesting the tubers, and that's a it's a type of asexual propagation where you're keeping the genetic uh, variety intact um, generation after generation. Um, some people will say that when you see flowers on potatoes, that means that it's the beginning of spuds forming um, from the potato plant. Um, that's not totally true. It's really just variety dependent. So sometimes spuds will start formation, the actual potato before they flower. Some will do it when they flower. Um, it really just depends. Um, and the flower color doesn't always correspond to the potato color. These purple flowers are actually on a variety called Asterix, um, which is a red potato, um, kind of a red storage potato. So let's take a look into the soil and actually see what, what's happening underground now. So I'm going to dig into our mound here. I'm going to keep my shovel about a foot away from the plant and really try to keep my spade at 90 degree angle perpendicular to the soil surface. And then I'm going to slowly lift and that's so I don't cut potatoes. As I lift, I'm going to try to shake this plant loose and let's see what we got in here. Okay. So what we are seeing, let's see if there's any more in here. That's about it. Okay, so what we are seeing here is we actually have this. Don't squeeze too hard. This is pretty gross. Um, this was the seed piece. So this was that seed that we planted um, that the sprouts came out of, and now it's actually in the process of kind of rotting and decaying, right? So that's kind of a rotten potato. It smells pretty bad. I'm going to put it over here. Um, but from that potato, and the, all these sprouts probably came from that one potato, um, these sprouts have established themselves as plants, and what you can see, especially on this guy here, is we see just the beginnings of these spuds starting to form. So again, they're coming out of the stem. The, these potatoes are actually, um, so they are um, swollen stems, right? And you can see that we're starting to get another one's going to form there, another one's going to form there. Um, here, this is the beginning of another spud. This is the beginning of another spud. Um, and so what we're seeing is, again, kind of an initial set. We're also seeing a second set coming. Um, so these potatoes look really good. Um, oh, this is a great example. Here, you can see um, this is where the seed piece was, all the way down here. That's where the spark comes from. And you can see this whole stretch of stem has been blanched, right? Has been because it was excluded from sunlight. And on the surface of this, you see this is again where our spuds are forming. Um, and so again, in our process, when we plant our spuds in the ground, throw about four or five inches of soil on top of them and make that sprout push through that soil before it first sees light, we get such a good jump start on creating that blanched stem that we get our you know, locations for basically tuber formation, our locations for our potatoes. Um, so that's a really good example there of how much of our stem is blanched and how much of this you know, hopefully we'll get, we'll get potatoes from. Hey everybody, we're back in the potatoes again um, and just wanted to take a look at how things are growing um, and take a look at 
some uh, a first harvest that we do, what we call new potatoes sometimes. So again, field still looks really good. Um, again, relatively clean from just our couple of weedings. Um, again, we haven't been through to hand weed this um, even once, so everything was done with the tractor. You can see we have some escapes, um, some of the yellow mustard flowers that are out there, um, but most of all, mostly this is a, a pretty clean field, definitely clean enough for us. Um, and we're getting close to harvest. So how do we know when it's time to harvest a potato? Uh, it's really not that tricky. Um, most of the varieties will have uh, certain days to maturity, but more than looking at the numbers, all you do is you dig up a plant. So um, we'll, I'll choose this plant right here. Um, again, you can see the plant is showing some signs of kind of being to its natural stage of maturity where it's starting to yellow out a little bit. Um, this plant over here actually has you know, these are the flowers that turned into actually the potato fruits. So again, if we were going to be trying to breed potatoes and select seeds, we would actually save the seeds that are inside this uh, potato fruit um, that looks very much like a, a tomato. Uh, they're in the same family. So, um, but again, that's not what we're doing right now. We're, we're looking for the spuds. So, um, so I'll take this plant. Um, this plant right here, and when I dig for these potatoes, I'm going to use my shovel. I'm going to try to dig it perpendicular to the soil, um, about 10 to 12 inches away from the base of the plant to make sure, if possible, that I don't actually cut any of these, the beautiful potatoes that are in here. So I get it really deep down. I'm just going to leverage it to really loosen the soil. And then before actually digging out, I'm going to grab the top here. And as I loosen it, I'm just going to shake this plant and We'll see, look at those beautiful potatoes. Um, and that is just what we want to see. So from this kind of one potato plant, this is a variety, a new variety to us this year called Golden Globe, um, yellow skin, yellow flesh. Um, here is our potato set. So again, you can see down here, this is the remnant of the seed piece, right? This little skin here. This is where that seed piece was planted. Again, the stalk grew from that, and then we had all these little sites where potatoes um, were initiated. You can see there's even another set they're trying to push right now. Um, but you know, this, these initial potatoes on the plant, this is what we'd expect for our main harvest. Um, so when do we know it's time to harvest? We like to basically wait until these potatoes are somewhere between 50 to 75 percent of the size that we want um, and these potatoes are just about there uh, so i think we might give these another week or two and then we'll cut water to start to tell these potatoes that it's time to really start to die back and start that curing process um, the curing process is really important for long-term storage of the potatoes. It thickens the skin and it helps the potatoes release the moist, some of the moisture um, that would cause them to rot otherwise. Before we get to that stage though, where they're at right now, we'll often do a harvest of potatoes just like this that we call new potatoes. And this is something that you all have probably seen on the market now. It's become popular in the last 10 years. Um, but these are basically fresh dug potatoes. Um, so we'll dig them like this. Um, the skins have not set. So while I can scrape the soil off, and I'll be gentle here as I scrape it off, if I apply any real pressure with my finger, I'll just take that skin right off. And so these thin skinned potatoes are kind of, you know, um, uh, maybe that's some of the selling point of these is that they have thin skins. Um, you think of them being really kind of delicate and fresh. Um, really the main difference is that these basically have a much higher water content. Um, than potatoes that have been stored. They haven't developed all their starches and sugars yet. So in my mind, personally, the new potato isn't quite as good as your stored potato, but um, it's still worth eating because you can eat it soon, right? And in, in my mind, right, any potato is a good potato. So the earlier you get them, the better. Um, we will give these to our CSA. These will hit farmer's markets early. Um, but uh, yeah, but so we'll harvest them just like this. When we process them, we'll spray them really minimally, really lightly. Um, and you know, they won't store well, but they'll store for a while in your fridge. 
Um, they won't store for many months, you know, maybe a couple weeks, uh, but yeah, they're for cooking right away. Um, and then in terms of, you know, overall yield, you know, again, yield is very specific to the variety. So, you know, this is kind of what I would suggest is kind of a moderate yield on a, for a potato plant. Um, you know, this is, this wouldn't be in a category of a really high yielder, like a Yukon gold or a, or a yellow fin. It's not a really low yielder, like some of the purple potatoes. This looks, looks about average for what we would expect from a potato plant. So plants look healthy. They look good. Um, I think, again, we'll cut water on some of these varieties in the next two, three weeks and, um, and we'll follow up with the curing process. All right, everybody. So we're back out in our potato field here. Um, again, a little over 100 days uh, past planting on these potatoes. Um, and we just finished mowing them with our flail mower here. So again, that flail mower um, is just gonna chop up those tops. And this is a way for us to give a not so subtle indication to the plants that they should stop growing right now, start thinking about storing those potatoes. Um, and really what we're looking for right now is the curing process, the actually um, the firming up of the skins of the potatoes so that they'll store, um, they'll release some of their moisture um, in the ground so that um, they'll store in your cabinet or your refrigerator um, or our cooler um, through the winter. So, um, so what you'll see here, this is, um, these are our potato plants here that just got mowed and chopped at the top. Um, and you can see there's still some leaves on them, but now what we'll do is we had cut water on these maybe a week or two ago. Um, we've mowed them off. Again, the, the cutting of the water is to encourage that dying back of the plant. The mowing on the top, again, to encourage that dying back of the plant, um, to really tell that plant time to store those potatoes. And now what we do is we're just gonna wait and we wait until when we dig the potatoes till the skins are set or hard enough um, that we can pull our mechanical digger through. So let's go ahead and look at a potato right here. I'll find my potato plant. And here is one of our purple potatoes. So really nice size on that potato. Um, and you'll see as I kind of push my finger, my thumb on it, you can see I can still, in some parts, those skins are nice and set. In some parts, those potatoes, the skin isn't quite set enough. And so we'll probably need to wait another, I don't know, maybe a week or two weeks on these, let these things really set up uh, before we come through and dig. All right, everybody. So you saw how we hand harvested uh, some of our new potatoes when the skins are so delicate uh, that we don't want to run them through our machine. But for most of our potatoes that we're going to harvest, um, we'll run them with our potato digger, which I have right here. Um, this is a great tool um, that is, it's really only got one purpose, which is to dig potatoes. But if you're going to grow any more than, you know, a half acre of potatoes, this is really what you need. So let's take a look at the flow. So this potato digger is an offset digger, which means that when we have our tractor spacing, um, we're gonna straddle two rows, um, and it's gonna dig this row over here on the right-hand side. Um, the way that it digs them is it has this little scoop here that basically just undercuts the potatoes. And if you'll remember from when we planted our potatoes, we really wanted to make sure we didn't plant them too deep because um, there's only so far down that we can get this scoop. Um, it has these two coulters on either side uh, to help cut any vines um, and keep the potato digger digging um, in a straight line. The potatoes will come up this, this chute, up this scoop right here, and then they'll fall into the baskets. The baskets are run by the PTO shaft um, that kind of um, spins the, the digger. And what that does is it makes these two baskets shift and shake. And as they shake, loose soil will fall through those grates, um, but the potatoes that are larger will sit on top and eventually get pushed off to the side. Now, there are some diggers that are, um, will deliver kind of right behind the row that you're digging. You know, some will do two rows or more rows at once and drop those potatoes right behind. Um, some of those are ground driven, ground -driven um, as opposed to PTO driven, but this is a model that we really like here on the farm. Once we've dug all our potatoes, um, then it's time for uh, 
turning that uh, field over and putting it into cover crop. And that's what you see here. So these were the first beds of potatoes that we dug. Um, you can see there's still some potatoes left that either the digger missed um, or uh, were just dropped during the harvest. Um, we always end up having potato weeds in the next year or two um, after we have a field of potatoes, but they're never so much that it really affects the next crop. Um, but once those potatoes are out, we just run the disc over the field to get some nice seed bed tilth. And then we run our cover crop drill through this field to actually push the seed into the ground. So all these lines that you see out in this field, each one of those lines is where our seed is. Um, and this year we're sowing uh, all legume mix of cover crop.